Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor. I'm going to uh, create a black and white conversion from this coloured image that I uh, shot in Yosemite National Park, which was Ansel Adams' old stomping ground. OK, let's uh, first start by just clicking on the, uh, the black and white in, as the treatment. I'm actually in the develop module here. Just press the D key on your keyboard to bounce that from the library into the develop module. And then we'll just start by clicking on the black and white. Now you can see that I have absolutely no adjustments applied to this image, so we're starting from its completely raw state. Now the first adjustments that I actually am going to make is in this little black and white panel here. Now you will notice that my basic panel just closed and that is because if I right click on this panel you'll see that I'm in solo mode which basically means as we're working in one panel uh, the other panels automatically uh, close down. OK, so we're going to create a little black and white mix and we're going to be working with this little uh, targeted adjustment tool here. Uh, we can click it to make it active. Now if we want the sky to be a little bit darker then I'm just going to click in that sky and drag down in order to darken the blues. Now the sky is very bright and that's uh, not coming down uh, really quickly, not as much as I would like. I would typically not push the blues uh, below minus 50 or 60 uh, because we can get artifacts uh, by being too aggressive uh, with that luminance adjustment there. Uh, I also might want to make uh, the foreground um, light. Now sometimes it's difficult to remember what these uh, colours actually were. Uh, it's not actually a green grass if you remember. Uh, it's sort of a, um, a yellowy um, sun bleach colour. And uh, we can actually push that up and we don't really need to know what the colour was uh, because uh, Lightroom is going to find that colour for us and it's making the orange and yellows just a little bit lighter there. Now there is actually only so much we can do in this uh, black and white mix and by far the best tools for creating uh, black and white conversions are actually the localized tools. Uh, we'll start up with the, uh, the graduated um, filters here and I'm just going to uh, drop that um, exposure slider uh, to around about uh, minus one and a half stops. If you already have a mixture of values uh, inside of this um, panel here you can actually zero them all just by double clicking the word effect and all sliders will be zeroed. You can also just uh, highlight uh, this field and use the um, down arrow keys. If I hold down the shift key uh, they'll come down in third of a stop increments. OK, so I'm going to come down perhaps about a minus one and a third stops. I'm going to start in right in the middle of the sky there and then just drag down to where I perceive the horizon line would be. OK, now as well as uh, darkening the um, sky with the luminance values, we could also push up uh, the clarity slide. I'm going to push that up to around about plus 50 there. And what this will do is it'll give more uh, depth uh, to uh, the clouds here. Now one um, graduated filter is not quite enough. I could actually push the exposure slider down. Okay, but I find I get a little bit more control by actually using multiple graduated filters. I'm just going to click away from this first graduated filter and drop in a second graduated filter. I'm not going to come quite so low this time. I'm just going to stop at the top of those distant mountains. OK, I'm actually going to drop in a third graduated filter. I'm replicating Ansel Adams' uh, dramatic black and white and sometimes his skies really nearly went black. And so I'm just going to drop in a third one there at the top of the image and just stop at the top of the clouds there. That's probably a little bit aggressive. So I'm just going to uh, bring that uh, exposure slider perhaps back up uh, just to under a, a one stop there. I'm going to double click the clarity slider. I don't really need any additional clarity in the upper portions of this image. Okay, now you will notice that we're, well, I've got my uh, Black's clipping warning coming on. We're just getting a very small amount of clipping and that's probably invoked by just pushing this a little bit far. We can pay attention to the black and white clipping uh, right at the end. So I'm just going to disable um, that um, uh, uh, black clipping um, uh, or show shadow clipping uh, triangle there above the histogram. 
Okay, so um, I'm also going to add one of these um, graduated filters uh, to the base of the image. It's a little bit bright at the base and I want to draw people into the center of the image. So I'm just going to drag another a fourth a graduated filter up from the base of the image there. And I'm going to push the exposure down to perhaps minus one and a half stops there uh, in order to uh, get the right amount of brightness value there. Okay, now uh, well, I'm going to uh, carry this uh, editing on uh, with the uh, localized adjustment brush tool here. I want uh, a little bit of extra brightness uh, around the hut, which is going to be my focal point. Uh, the viewer's eye is drawn towards the brightest areas of the image. So I'm actually going to just uh, double click to zero that and then perhaps move that up to uh, just around about half a stop. And I'm going to increase the size of the brush that I'm working with here. I'm going to use the close square bracket key, uh, which is just along from the letter P on your keyboard. And I'm going to increase the size of the brush there. Now you'll see that I'm working with the feather at uh, 100, the flow at 100, and also the density at 100. I'm also going to work with the auto mask switched off. Uh, the adjustment brush will work much faster uh, with that um, uh, checkbox unchecked. And uh, it also um, removes the possibility of getting edge artifacts when we're working with um, heavy hitting adjustments such as the exposure uh, or luminance here. I'm just going to paint in just to bring a little bit more brightness in that distant uh, snow-capped uh, mountain there and also over this foreground hut here. Now again, if I want to uh, create more localized contrast, I'm just going to wind up that clarity slider in order to create more definition in the textures here. Now if I hover my mouse cursor over uh, that brush, you'll see where I've been painting. Okay, now if you um, spill into perhaps the sky a little bit with uh, using this technique because your painting skills perhaps aren't that accurate, uh, we can actually remove any of that spillage. Okay, so uh, the way we would do that is just to uh, hold down the Alt or Option key in order to uh, get a, a negative adjustment. And then just as so long as we keep the center of this uh, brush uh, behind that hill, we can just wipe that adjustment away uh, from the top of that sky there. Now if we move our mouse cursor over, uh, we'll see that we've effectively uh, removed um, that um, exposure adjustment uh, from the sky. Okay, so uh, I'm going to add another new br um, uh, adjustment brush. So we're just going to click on the word new here. You'll see the original pen grays out, so that makes that adjustment inactive. I'm now free to move the uh, sliders without affecting that previous adjustment. I'm just going to roll the exposure down uh, perhaps to um, uh, minus half a stop and also increase clarity. I'm going to work on these distant uh, mountains which are just losing the definition because of the amount of ultraviolet light here. And if I just wipe over those distant mountains, I'm going to get a little bit more definition that I'm looking for here. I can also move into the sky just to create a little bit more definition in those clouds as well. If I've got a little too much um, uh, darkening happening in this uh, area here, I can fade that transition between uh, unedited and edited just by lowering the density slider maybe to 50 and just creating a, a softer transition between the adjusted area and the non-adjusted area. This actually reduces the adjustment to 50% in this area because the density is set at 50%. I'm now free to put that back to 100 without affecting that uh, last adjustment that I made. Okay, I'm also going to um, paint with this same adjustment uh, down into uh, the lower corners here. I'm just going to create some uh, foreground darkening um, down into these areas uh, in order to draw the viewer's eye up into the center of that image. Now if I didn't want uh, that clarity coming into that, I could just press uh, Command Z or Command Z there and apply that as a new brush without the clarity. 
so we'll just apply that as a half a stop negative exposure I'm going to use a very large brush for this and uh, again the auto mask is off otherwise we could create artifacts in those areas I actually prefer this uh, adjustment uh, without uh, the clarity we don't want to draw attention to the extra uh, detail in that foreground area okay so the image is coming along quite nicely now uh, what I have noticed um, however is we've got some um, um, very small clouds uh, just white specks up in the central portion of the image which I'm finding a little bit distracting so I'm just going to come up to the spot removal tool here now if you're having uh, any trouble uh, spotting small blemishes or maybe sensor spots in the sky here uh, we could come in and click in the toolbar for visualize spots and now quite clearly you can see those little um, spots that I was looking at this actually might be actually a sensor spot in the um, in the upper portion of the sky I'm just going to reduce the size of the spotting tool again using the uh, open square bracket tool next to the letter to P. I don't want to use a spotting tool too large here and just one click uh, will create a, a fix for that. Now we actually are in the heel okay and the opacity is set to 100 uh, and the feather is 0. Okay now uh, I could increase the size of this and I can actually just uh, drag over that area just paint over those three small spots. Now I'm just going to move that to a slightly better position. Just move that uh, alongside there. I don't want to pick up any of the texture of that low-lying cloud in that area. Uh, we'll just unclick the visualize, visualize spots feature there just to check that the um, the, the feature uh, has uh, removed those spots without any artifacts and uh, just to come out of um, there we'll just click on that tool and come out of there and now we can come back to the basic panel okay now um, we're ready just to um, as you said there are absolutely no adjustments still we've been pretty much working with the HSL uh, or black and white um, uh, tonal mix uh, adjustments there and also the localized adjustments via the graduated filters and adjustment brush tool um, typically when we are converting images from color to black and white it is uh, typical to actually um, for many um, photographers to increase the contrast I'm just going to increase that to plus 30 I don't want to get it too dramatic here okay so I think about 30 is just about right if you're unsure the, of the precise values that you want I'm always in favor of pushing it very high and then backing off until the image looks comfortable okay so plus 30 is, uh, is where I feel comfortable with the contrast uh, for this particular image if you want just a little bit more localized texture this would be courtesy of the clarity slider which is also a very common slider to use when we're looking for large amounts of drama I'm thinking this would be better without the clarity so I'm just going to double click that I like the subtlety of those um, grey tones running through the foreground here so I'm going to left, leave that set at zero uh, we're just going to finish this image off by um, looking at uh, the uh, sharpening so we'll go into the detail tab and uh, we're going to uh, zoom in just press the Z key to zoom in and we can actually now uh, just drag that image so we're going to look at uh, a highly detailed part of this image maybe this hut here now the sharpening could take a little bit of a rise here I'm just going to push that to maybe uh, 70 or so to get a, a nice sharpening now with sharpening you might find uh, um, uh, texture or noise also starts to get sharpened in the smoother areas now we can actually mask the effects of the sharpening in those areas just by holding down the alt option key and uh, raising that masking slider now any areas that appear in this threshold view that are black will not be subjected to the sharpening process so I'm going to raise that to around about 70 and that will keep the uh, smoother areas reasonably um, clean uh, but still apply the sharpening to the higher contrast edges inside of this file okay I'm going to press the Z key to zoom out 
Okay, we're nearly done now. Um, one of the things that uh, also is common with these black and white conversions is actually to par apply a post crop vignette. Now my preferred option for the post crop vignette is color priority. We're less likely to clip highlights and uh, shadows uh, when using the color prior priority option in the post crop vignette. And if I just drag that down we can just darken the colors uh, or sort of corners uh, very subtly. I wouldn't want it to be too aggressive here. Um, so again I'm just going to back that up to around about minus 20 value uh, for some slightly darker corners. Okay, we're going to return to the basic panel just to finish this image off and one of the last adjustments that I make when we've been doing a lot of localized adjustments is to set a white and black point for this image. And again, holding down the Alt and Option key, we can click on that white slider and we can raise that until we find a white point inside of the image. As you can see there, it's coming inside of the clouds there. I'll just lower that down. Now we're using the full dynamic range of that image. I can also do the same thing with the black slider. Again, holding down the Alt Option key. We got some very small amounts of clipping just down here. Uh, so I'm just going to raise that black slider just to remove that clipping from the image. Now you can, if you're in a hurry, just rely on these uh, clipping warning triangles, but you get a much more accurate feedback by holding down the Alt Option key and assigning these values in threshold mode. Okay, now if you were trying to uh, reproduce the effects of uh, a black and white analog film, you could actually return to the effects panel and uh, use the grain slider. Again, you really want to be zoomed in for this and uh, you're wanting to be seeing the grain applied to perhaps some of the smoother areas as well as the uh, detailed areas and uh, you can just then raise that grain slider to get um, the effects of maybe 35 millimeter um, film or if you wanted a medium format film you could just back that off slightly. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave a very small amount of texture here. Okay, um, Ansel Adams used large format film, so the grain would have been very fine. And we could also decrease the roughness of that grain um, in order to create a, a slightly smoother uh, grain effect there. And then we'll zoom out. Okay, and uh, that concludes uh, the black and white conversion. And just so, uh, um, just to finish this off, I would typically take a snapshot of this image. I'm just going to press the keyboard shortcut Command N on a Mac or Control N on a PC, and then create a keyboard, uh, sorry, a snapshot. This allows me, um, I'll just call it Edit One. And um, you'll find the snapshots over here in the snapshots panel. Okay, at any time if we decide to reset this image and create an alternative version, at any time I can always go back um, to my edited version just by coming to my snapshots panel and choosing that snapshot. And as you can see, a very dramatic uh, uh, difference, uh, primarily through the localized adjustment tools inside of Lightroom.